everybody. CW here. Let's make up some of these uh, 410 cases. Uh, 410 loads. This is a case skive. We're just going to open up these case mouths. They get a little bit square and nasty and they're hard to load. So this will reuniform them. We can't really do any damage here because uh, we're going to cut these off anyway. But even if you weren't cutting them off, I mean, this wouldn't, this wouldn't uh, be damaging the cases uh, seriously. I'm sure, it'll cut down on the life a little bit. If you are, you know, it's got a little bit of grip to it. You are removing some material, but if you look at how nasty that is, how nice and round it is. We'll get rid of that tool and this one will do all the way up to 12 gauge we'll put back in our roll crimper that we'll use in a few minutes save our batteries and let me reposition you stand by i think you're gonna let's see okay all right i've already cut off these stump wads um they were uh they were looking like this same on each end and they work good for a ball, but we're not loading a ball. We're loading these 200 grain slugs. So we cut them off. So let's charge, uh, let's charge with powder. And I'm going to use a scooper here. Actually, we have to, uh, we have to resize first. So let's reset up here. I thought I already had these resized. Let's uh let's deprime and resize these right over here. Let me do this off camera so we can keep YouTube happy. We are not showing the complete process here, but I think you get the idea. You know what I have to do here to knock that primer out and put a new one in. Stand by. All right, I miscounted. I need two more of these. And the only thing you have to do when you cut these, you have to be uh you have to be you know the same length, and you want to make sure that they're square. So don't just uh, haphazardly whack them off. Go careful and be sure that uh, that you're cutting straight down so that you get a smooth, I mean a straight uh, transition. Otherwise, you could start your uh, you could be starting your slug down the bore crooked. You don't want to do that. Okay, so we're done with this with the stump wads. Let's get out our fiber wad. I like to use a a natural fiber wad. This is a half inch thick fiber wad. And let's, uh, now we've got them all primed, ready to go. So let's move on to our, our powder charge step. And where did my scooper go? There it is. There's my notes. And we are going to charge this with little gun. About the only place I really like using little gun is uh, shotgun shells anymore. It's, uh, I'm not I'm not a huge fan, but uh, as a shotgun powder, it's a good one. And uh, scooping is extremely consistent. You might look down your nose at it, but done properly, it's very very consistent. And I'm doing it over my powder here so I don't make a mess. And the proper way to, to scoop powder is you go into the powder with the back of the scoop like that. And then come back up and it's full. If it's not full, dump it out and do it again. Don't try and scoop a little more because you'll just pack it down and you'll get an inconsistent scoop. So you go backwards into the powder and come back up and it'll be a little overflowed and just tap it off like that and you will be shocked how consistent that powder charge is again backwards through the powder forwards tap it off level and this scooper just works out really good because it fits right inside the mouth of the powder of the uh, shell so I don't spill anything 
and I'm not going to give you this load, but it is in it is in the manual, and it's actually uh, a little bit lighter. This load I'm using is rated for three triple O balls, and those triple O balls weigh about uh, mid mid to upper 70 grains a piece, so at about 210 grains. 215 grains of, of a bullet and this bullet we're using is just under 200 it's like 197 with this alloy so uh, that's going to be perfectly fine See, we got, we're shallow, dump it out. Don't try and refill it. You're tempted to just put a little more powder in, you know. Don't do it. Just dump it back out. Start over. It takes a second. Okay. Get rid of that. All our cases are filled. We'll give them a quick, a quick look here. miss any. I know we didn't double any because we moved the uh, shells over and I'm pretty sure we got them all because we moved the shells as we went but it doesn't hurt to check. Okay let's get our tool over here and this works really good but I did also make one and I made it out of just a, a 3 8 dowel. Fits inside there really nice. This one here is a HS strut for a turkey call, and it just gives you a handle, so it works really good. So we're going to take our stump wads, we're going to put them in here one at a time, with the cup side down so it cups around the powder. It's going to be used as a gas seal. And uh, shotgun loading is really neat. Doesn't take as much as uh, metallic reloading. You can do a lot more with uh, just regular tools without anything fancy. Um, even uh, the, the one fancy part, I'll call it fancy, and that is to uh, to uh, resize the cases because there is resizing needed to be done. You can make up. A resizing die out of washers and just get the right diameter and size down those cases and drive it back off and it'll work just fine. I've done it for years. Not a big deal. Not hard to do. Not hard to figure out. Not scientific at all. It's not like uh, resizing a 3006 or something where it's, you know, you you work the case too much, you know, you're you're causing inaccuracies, yada, yada, yada. Shotgun shells are way, way, way more forgiving. And we're just going to drive that down. And that's going to give us enough compression over top of the powder because shotgun shells, everything needs to be compressed. Okay, there's them. Now we're going to put in our cushion wad, put it in the exact same way, really doesn't matter. These are pressed, there's a big die that comes down and presses these out so one end is kind of domed and one end is kind of flat. Really doesn't matter what you use, which way it goes. I put the domed end in first just because I think it's a little bit easier to not scrape away and cut off the sides as you do it, but it really, really doesn't matter. Here's one that's damaged. You're going to find those. Set it aside. Not a big deal. They're stupid, stupid cheap, so you're going to have some that aren't, aren't right. Good air. Love when that happens. I tipped out the exact number that I that I needed. 
right, there they all are. Let's push these down. Same exact thing. The resistance inside the case will provide the holding power to compress that powder. All done. Let's do some of these hollow point up and some of them hollow point down. Do the first five here. Hollow point up. They really should shoot better the other way because they act like a shuttlecock with the weight forward. If you think of shotgun slugs, Foster shotgun slugs, they're a shuttlecock. They're, they're a, a cup, a cup of lead, you know, with a hollow base. And uh, part of that is to seal the bore. And part of that is just to give a weight forward projectile because you're not talking about rifling or anything. You know, you're just talking about a smooth bore. So, um, much like a pellet gun, that weight forward design, anyway, I made too many. That weight forward design, um, tends to be more accurate. So same thing here. Push these down all the way. On top of that wadding. Okay, now we're going to trim them to length. How far do you trim them? Well, I've already got, you know, these pieces here that I can go by. But basically you want about, well, if you, if you think of a roll crimp, the roll crimp is going gonna, is gonna to roll this inside itself, kind of like a tube sock, and back down. So you've got to have enough for it to make that turn and down. So you want probably, a eh, quarter inch isn't too much, but it's, it's borderline. So I would say at least an eighth of an inch. That's what we got. It just happens to go to the line. This happens to go to the line. So if we go right to the line, it's right at the top of that line. So we're going to cut it a heavy eighth of an inch, a heavy eighth of an inch longer. And these plastic hulls cut really, really pretty easy. And again, try and be as straight as you can. And then when you get to the end, you just turn it and there you go. So that's about what we want. And that's about what we've gotten with these. This one here is a little bit shorter. So we're just going to, we know what we're going to do here. About an eighth of an inch longer than the, than the uh, writing that's on them. But that writing doesn't necessarily always in the, in the same position. So give it a look. See, all right, we got one with a hollow point. So just give it an eyeball with one master there and uh, you'll be all right. You actually get a little more um, precision with your cut if you roll it at the end because it'll hold square. Follow me. It'll hold square down that length of that uh, length of that um, plastic. And this is literally, obviously, real time. This is how long it takes just to load up a couple. And I don't want to load too many in case it's a dud or, you know, it's no good or the load's 
and it's not going to be too hot but you know what i mean if it's it's not right it doesn't shoot right it's not accurate uh, there's a problem with it of some kind you don't want to be stuck with too many of them okay so let's clean up our mess here let me reposition you back over to the drill press and we'll uh we'll put some roll crimps on these stand by all right let's go first thing i like to do is put a little bit of lube on my roll crimper and that's just done with a spritz of wd-40 or whatever lube you might have you can set this for a dead stop to get exactly the same and they make fancy tools that hold these but you'll see it's you can you can tell and you can you can do it just like this and it's just fine it starts to pull away from your fingers and you'll see it, it rolls right in there it tapers the end for feeding and works just fine it doesn't roll quite as nice these hollow points as it will on the solid. You'll see what I mean. It's a little bit rolled in, but it's okay. It's going to be fine. Uh, the roll crimp is going to provide the final touch of uh, resistance so that this load works properly. Without the proper compression, the proper shells don't work. You get uh, what's called what I call bloopers. They come out of the barrel and they poop. They don't go very far. Whenever you have that happen, it's not the end of the world. Just make sure there's nothing in your barrel. Make sure your barrel's not obstructed. Here's the uh, here's the solids. And you still get a little bit of a, a roll in there. tapered so it feeds nice you see that little bitty fold in there doesn't mean anything it's just fine and here's uh here's all of them now you see we get a little bit of a fold in that one they're imperfect but they're going to be okay you know we're not going for the utmost in precision here these are just fun blasting loads you know maybe i get lucky and a coyote or something with them but that if it's accurate i ought to be devastating with that hollow point and there we go there they are ready to go and uh, i like the fact that they're short because my one gun that i shoot these in is only a uh, a short chamber uh, i don't know exactly how long it is but it's an old 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 410 so it's uh it's not a long it doesn't take a three inch, it only takes a short two and a half. So this would be just fine. There it is. Let's hope they uh, they do well. It's going to be a little while before I can shoot them, but I will have a video on that too. God bless everybody. CW. <laughs>